Hello students, welcome to another video lecture for ComSci 125 Operating Systems. We are now in chapter 14, which is the Memory API. In the previous chapter, we talked about the address space, which basically contains the memory state of a process and this include sections for code for data for the stack and for the heap okay. in this uh, chapter we're going to look at the different library functions that a programmer can call to allocate memory that the programmer needs in this or or the program let's take a look at the process memory usage when we write a program in c usually we need to allocate some space for our variables and other data elements that our program will manipulate usually this uh, data or variables are placed in the data section of a process's address space like the global variables that you define they are placed in the data section the actual instructions the machine code is actually placed in the code section and the code and data sections normally they do not change because the moment they are loaded into the main memory, they remain static. They are just usually read, uh, read only, except for the code part where you can execute whatever is in the code section. And they are pre-allocated at load time and no allocations and the allocations will happen in the lifetime of the process. Now on the stack, the stack section, uh, these are actually these uh, the stack actually changes during function calls, and these are short-lived allocations. As you recall in ComSci one three one, when you use the call instruction, uh, the return address is pushed to the stack, okay, and when the return instruction is issued, then the return address is popped from the stack. So these are short-lived allocations that are usually happening during uh, function calls. Recall that the stack is used to store function parameters, local variables, and the return address. The, the allocation and uh, the allocation that happens here is usually accomplished by manipulating a register, specifically the stack pointer. And this register is implicitly manipulated using the push and pop instructions. So in a way, the stack is implicitly managed and it is actually the compiler that generates the pushes and pops for a C program. <clears throat> and the last section of a process's address space is the heap. And the heap is usually used to uh, allocate uh, memory at runtime. And it is usually long lived, meaning it's possible that a programmer will allocate a certain amount of memory on the heap and then uh, do something else. And then before the process terminates, it will deallocate the memory allocated on the heap. The main difference between, uh, the main difference of the heap from the stack is that the heap must be explicitly allocated or the data that will be stored on the heap 
must be explicitly allocated by the programmer. Unlike the data stored in the stack, wherein the compiler is the one that manages the allocation and the deallocation. And this is actually challenging to both the systems and programmer because this is basically uh, error problem. Let's take a look at this example uh, on the right side. We have here a function definition void fun, and this is a typical uh, API call wherein we use the malloc function to allocate a certain amount of memory and then we have a pointer variable here that is used to contain the address of the allocated memory. Let's now begin discussing the details of the malloc function which is used to allocate memory on the heap. So in order to use the malloc function, we need to include the std live header file. And what this function does is to allocate a memory region on the heap. It accepts two parameters. Actually, it accepts a size parameter, one parameter, which specifies the number of bytes that we would like to allocate on the heap. And the data type is usually size underscore t, and it is an unsigned integer type. We usually use size t to make uh, the code portable. Then it will return the it will return a void type pointer to the memory block allocated by malloc. So a pointer will be returned, and if successful, but if uh, the allocation is unsuccessful, a null will be returned. Can we take a look at the details of this function through the map page? So this is the family of functions that are used to allocate and free dynamic memory. It's usually referred to as dynamic memory because you can freely allocate and deallocate memory using this function. So we have malloc, we have uh, free, we have calloc, we have realloc, and we have realloc array. We'll discuss this in detail in the succeeding slides. So that's the description of the malloc function. Now, as you can see in the previous, uh, in this example, we also uh, use the size of function. The size of, actually this is not a function, but rather it is uh, a macro, okay? So a preprocessor macro, okay? So routines and macros are utilized for size and malloc instead of typing uh, numbers directly. So instead of, uh, as you can see in the previous, in the definition of malloc, uh, the size parameter refers to the number of bytes to allocate. Now instead of actually placing in the actual number of bytes, we can use macros, which somehow is more uh, portable. One of these macro is the size of, which is actually an operator, the size of operator. And this is how it is used. So let's say we would like to allocate uh, 10 integers. Right? 
So this is how we're going to do that. So we have the malloc call and then we specify the number of integers that we would like to allocate and then we multiply that by size of int and uh, it will return a, a pointer if successful and assign that to x. Right. So the actual size of uh, x is known at runtime. Right. So this the output of this uh, code fragment is 4 okay, because uh, this is treated as a pointer type so it will output of 4 because uh, at runtime when you use uh, size of x here it simply output the size of the pointer variable x okay now the actual uh, it's also possible that at uh, compile time the actual size of x can be known for example if you have this definition in x this time this is an array when we use printf size of x okay, we we'll get uh, should be okay, so it should it will actually be 40 because the size of int is four bytes and we allocated we allocated 10 10 integers so 10 times 4 size of x that will be 40 40 bytes right so these are some of the things to remember when using the size of operator but this is the typical usage of this operator you should also be careful when using strings for example if you want to allocate a string we need to you can use the str length and then we need to add another byte for the null terminator the next api function that uh, we need to learn is the free function the free function is used to deallocate the memory allocated using malloc. It requires a void star parameter which was allocated using malloc and it, it does not return anything, it just uh, deallocates the memory referenced by the pointer. Now let's take a look at the mechanism of memory allocation in the heap. First, we this, let's say this is the address space of a process, and we have a 16 kilobyte size address space. We define an integer pointer, so pi here is a pointer to an integer, star pi in star pi. So this is a local variable. If this is a local variable, this will be placed on the stack. Then if we have this call, pi equals in star, which is typecasting, uh, in star malloc size of int times four. That means we are allocating four integers and we assume that the size of n is four bytes this is how it will look in the main memory so pi not actually pi star pi okay uh will have a value 2kb which is actually the address on the heap okay so initially the heap this is the start of the heap and when we call the malloc the algorithm to allocate memory on the heap will use this first slot for example so 2kb will be placed 
in the location being uh, on the will serve as the value of star pi and then uh, this address here will be 2kb plus 4 this one will be 2kb plus 8 and this one will be 2kb plus 12 so there are 1 2 3 4 4 integers allocated And finally, when we call the free function, what will happen is uh, star pi will be invalid and the start of the heap will be returned to this because these memory areas will be free. And eventually, this will be the final state of the process's address space with the star pi being invalid or pointing to nothing. So let's discuss some of the common errors when it comes to using the different functions for memory allocation. Malloc uh, and free and size of. So the first error here is forgetting to allocate memory. So oftentimes when a programmer would like to use memory from the heap, this is the typical uh, declaration. The first one you have the source wherein you have allocated in C, when you assign, uh, if you have a car pointer and you assign it to a string literal, then memory is automatically allocated for that. So you have a character string constant here. And then let's say we have a star, another pointer, the destination car star DST, which is the destination and this is unallocated when you do this there will be a segmentation fault because uh, there is no allocation for the destination okay so what will happen is that there will be a side fault and the process will die because this is what will happen if you have this code so assuming that these are in the main function, so this 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 will be src mdst will be variables on the stack. So you have here what uh, src mdst here. So let's say since dst are since src is a string constant, it will be pointing to a memory location on the probably data section or uh, some other static area, BSS, something like that. And then DST at this point is not pointing anywhere. So when you have STR CPY call, DST does not exist. So you will be writing to some random memory location and you get a seg fault. Let's take a look at some source code for this. Okay, so we have here some examples. Okay, let's take a look at no mano. So this is the code for uh, no mano as shown in the slide. Right? Let's try to build this. We use minus G to generate debugging information.
and it compiles successfully. So let's try to run it. And this is what you will get segmentation for core down. Okay. Now we have another file here for the no malloc corrected. So we can see. So the main difference here from the previous one is that we allocated uh, 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 memory on the heap for the destination. So we can uh, say compile the sample. and there is no more problem. So that's a common error that is uh, committed by uh, some programmers, especially students. Now let's move on to the next common error, forgetting to allocate. Uh, so this is the solution. So it's a solution or the correction for that for the previous uh, problem. Okay. So you simply allocate a memory, uh, simply allocate a memory first before doing the copy so that when it is copied, you get the uh, uh, actual value. Now this one is a one sign, so it's basically backslash. So it uh, PowerPoint converts this to automatically to the one sign, but this is backslash, okay, backslash zero. And the next common error is not allocating enough memory. This happens when, uh, as I mentioned earlier, okay, in this example, we failed to allocate um, enough memory for the copy to work. We only allocated the actual length of the string, but we did not add additional uh, byte to store the null terminator. So this code will actually work properly, but this is actually incorrect. So I also have a demonstration here. Uh, So it's actually called in buffer overflow. So you can look at uh, bof.c. So this is the code for the buffer overflow. We have the source here, and we have the destination here. We did an allocation, but the amount of space is not enough. The copy will work then we free the allocated memory and then we return. Okay, so if we compile the list, which is compiled. Successfully, then when we run this, it compiles successfully as if uh, it is correct, okay? But actually, it is not correct. Okay, so if we say print the value of DST uh, 
So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So, but the code is obviously wrong because we did not allocate uh, allocate one or byte for the null character. So uh, visualizing this error, it will look like this. So we did the allocation. Uh, on the heap, the source string is composed of six bytes. Okay, but the destination, we only allocated five bytes because strlen returns the actual length of the string, excluding the null character. Okay, so that is what happens, and we have a buffer overflow because the backslash zero or is not of the null terminator is not actually allocated. And the next error is forgetting to initialize. So here's an example code. Um, we allocated an integer on the heap, okay, uh, one integer, and we tried to read the value of this integer and with the, the, this integer is not yet initialized. So it might, uh, this pointer or uh, the area that is being pointed to by this pointer is not initialized yet. So it's possible that some corrupted or some values will be present in that particular area. So this is how it will look like. So we have this pointer, right? And when we allocate that, it will point to somewhere on the heap. But since that area is not initialized, then some other value might be present in that uh, area. So do we have, let's do an example. So this is an example of uninitialized uh, read. So we have here uh, the value zero. Okay. So sometimes it works, but uh, sometimes it may not work. So it's actually a, a bug. Forgot the box slash Okay. So sometimes it will work, other times. Uh, it will not work. So in this uh, in this example, we have zero. But if you have complex uh, structures, zero might not be, might not be the output. So we can uh, check for the correction. The and we simply initialize the. Uh, uh, the newly allocated pointer for some value before we read, we read it. So the next uh, common error is the memory leak. Now in the memory leak, what happens is we allocate uh, a lot of memory, but you never free this uh, memory leak area. So we'll pause for a while. Okay, let's continue. Um, the next common error is the memory leak. And this main error happens when the programmer fails to free the allocated memory 
and eventually you run out of memory. So this is the scenario that will uh, happen. So you have here a lot of unused uh, memory area because the programmer failed to uh, deallocate or use free for this memory area. Let's have an example. This is an example uh, uh, code. Okay. Here we allocated uh, an int. We use it and then we display this value. But we did not uh, free it. Then we use another call, calloc, to allocate uh, three in the years and then assign that to A again, then use the slots, then print the values and then return. So the main issue here is that we did not deallocate the memory allocated here and allocated in this area. So it will look like there is no problem with the code, but over time, if you have a server that is uh, running for a long time, the uh, memory leak will uh, manifest itself. So for these simple examples, the memory leak will not uh, be evident, but if you have a server that is running for a long period of time, eventually you will run out of memory and you'll have a memory leak. So essentially, that is the memory leak. Then the next one is uh, dangling pointers, right? So dangling pointers meaning uh, you're freeing memory before you are done with it. Okay. So a pro example here, a program accesses the memory with an invalid pointer. So let's say we have a, a list here. So A uh, is pointing to this node. Okay. Then B is pointing to this node. Okay. And in the memory, this is how it will look like. Uh, A uh, is allocated here, this in the stack, and we have it points here. Okay. And then this one points here, and then this one points here. So this is the uh, null part. Okay. For uh, what happens with a uh, dangling pointer is that let's say uh, B is freed. So this one is freed, right? So what will happen is since this node is reachable via this node, but it was freed earlier, then this node will no longer be reachable because there will be a dangling pointer here. It's pointing to uh, nowhere, right? Because you already freed, freed this. So this is common in dynamic data structures like linked list as shown in this example, okay? So this is, uh, this node here is this one, this node there is this one, and this node here is this one, okay? So we free this node, it's no longer here. So it's point, this, this pointer is pointing here, but there is no one pointing to this. So this will be uh, a lost a lost node or lost memory allocation. Okay, so you, you can no longer 
can no longer access this uh, memory area because we lost track of it. So three in this node. Okay, so that's what we mean by a dumping point. So uh, you can you can look at an example. is the example uh, dangling pointer right so we have we allocated the memory okay but we freed it then we tried to access it right and this is what we get so the discord compile So it works, right? But isn't it uh, obvious that we freed the pointer already? So we freed the pointer already. Why are we still able to access that? Okay, so this example of a uh, dangling pointer, okay? The next common error is uh, double free. So when it's, it's an obvious error, so you free the allocated memory twice. So I don't think I have an example, but that's called one. So let's just use the dummy example. Okay, so you see me the error double free detected in Tcash 2 and we have a core dump. Okay. So that's all we get. Yes. What else? Okay, so invalid freeze, uh, this simply means that uh, you use some parameter in the free call but you did not use malloc for that particular pointer, so that will be invalid. Let's pause for a while. Okay, so as you've seen, uh, those kinds of uh, error discussed previously are quite hard to detect. So automated tools can actually help in identifying uh, those common errors and we have uh, two examples here purify and uh, valgrind and we're going to use uh, valgrind for some demonstration okay so let's take a look at an example of how to use valgrind if you don't have Valgrind in your system, you can simply uh, install it. So it's already installed on my machine. Now let's take a look at some of the examples we did earlier. Let's say no malloc. Right? So to test, uh, no malloc for errors, you can type uh, dot uh, valgrind dot no malloc dot l. 
and this will be the execution of that uh, event and Vagrant will display some error about the behavior of the process. So let's take a look. So it says here that there is an uh, use of there is a use of an initialized value of size a. Okay. Why is that? Because when we cut no malloc but C. So we're trying to access a memory that does not exist. So this is what this is the error that uh, we get it. Okay. So this one is actually the error in invalid right of size one because we're trying to copy the uh, now a character, but uh, or, or uh, the string to the destination, but it has no address, right? So address here is not stuck, malloc, or recently freed. So if we, since we corrected that in the no malloc corrected, right? So it will tell us that everything is okay on the corrected part. Now let's try running Valorant on the memory leak. So it will tell you that it executed the program correctly, supposedly correctly, but in the heap summary, uh, so at exit it used 16 bytes uh, using three allocs, one freeze, and uh, some other information. But there is a leak summary here that says that it leaked uh, 16 bytes in two blocks. Okay, so we can use this parameter to uh, look at the this argument to look at the details of the memory where it occurred since we compiled the program with debugging information it will actually point us where in the program the memory memory leak is happening. So it says here memory that c colon nine. So and memory that c colon fifteen. So if we look at the code, So this is the part that Valgren detected that we did not deallocate this memory area and also line 15, we did not deallocate this memory area. So how can we fix this? Right? So I have here the code. So we simply Call three for the uh, for the matching malloc. If we compile this, and then we run value grind on the corrected uh, memory executable. Then we can see that Valgrind will not uh, tell us any error. So again, uh, no error regarding memory leak because we 
uh, place the correct free calls for the corresponding malocs. Okay. So that's about value grind. I'll give a homework for you to try out value grind. Okay, so uh, the previous functions like malloc free and free, they are not actually system calls. Okay, they are library functions and the actual system calls related to memory allocation is the break system call and the s break system call so this basically just adjust the uh, the end of the heap in the address space so in the figure here okay, uh, so, so this one here okay so this location is the no in the previous slides we use the function malloc and free but these functions are not actually system calls but rather they are library functions that use the actual system calls and in linux or in unix systems we have the brk and sbrk system calls which are actually being called by the malloc function whenever uh, depending on the implementation of the model function and the programmers usually should not directly invoke brk or sbrk instead they should use the malloc function and other related functions a more modern uh, system call that is used to implement malloc is the mmag function which is a system call to create uh, anonymous uh, memory regions okay? and this is actually used in modern implementations of malloc uh, you've seen this uh, earlier other family members of malloc so we have c alloc so the, the beauty of C alloc is that it uh, zeroes out the memory area. So whatever is there previously in that memory area is removed okay, or cleared out basically by zeroing the contents of that memory area before returning a pointer to it. So that way you don't get some random values from that memory area. And you can also specify the number of items here instead of using multiplication as you, as in the case with malloc realloc is if you want to resize the previously allocated pointer or memory area and the heap so you can enlarge it okay you can specify a new size okay? new size for the memory uh, blocks in the, if you want to Precise it so you still have the same pointer, but the amount of bytes or the number of bytes allocated in the heap is adjusted depending on the size that you specify. And that would be the end for uh, this chapter.